One of the coolest things about retro handhelds is the ability to play games that for whatever reason never made it here from Japan. So like, you know, you have your Dragon Quest games that eventually made it here as Dragon Warrior and your mainline stuff like Final Fantasy VI, which was Final Fantasy III for us. But what about all those games that couldn't get their visa at the airport? Well, you're in luck because me and my buddy Jelanimal picked 10 and he wrote an article and I'm doing a video on them. So sit back. Watch my video on these 10 games that never made it west, and then when you're done, go read the article. Or I guess, vice versa. I don't know. Let's dive in. First off is Bahamut, ba Bahamut? Ba Bahamut Lagoon. I don't know how to say it. But it's a tactical RPG for the Super Nintendo. It's not related to Final Fantasy, but it has Final Fantasy elements. It's from the same Final Fantasy team. It has the same kind of summons. But you play as the uh, superhero... Everyone loves you, leader of the Dragon Squad, and you have to defend the kingdom, and then you fail, and then you lead a resistance, and it's pretty cool. It's uh, a tactical RPG. You can fight yourself, or you can send out the dragons to fight for you. There goes Gary. He's going to burn these guys to death, and uh, we're actually playing it on TRPG of the quarter next quarter, so if you, uh, you want to play it, join the Discord and play. It's pretty fun. Up next, we have Far East of Eden Zero. Now, this is a, a pretty intense game. It has a real-time clock in it, and you need to really fiddle-fart with the emulator. I had to set mine to NTSC format, and then I had to reset it and press different buttons every time I reset it. Uh, I think I reset it three times just to get the real-time clock to work. Otherwise, it's a really cool samurai-style RPG. You end up as a uh, Hegan who you learn that you are the legendary fire hero, and then everything goes to crap. You know, your your father figure, something bad happens to him, and you gotta go out and you gotta fight the demon lord. Uh, it has pretty cool combat. You can use scrolls, you can use spells, or you can just slash the crap out of people with your samurai sword, which I end up just doing that a lot. But otherwise, it's a pretty fun RPG, and uh, check it out if you've never played it before. Now we come to Fire Emblem Thracia 776, which is kind of like one of my top three favorite Fire Emblems. It's really hard to play in 2024, and it needs a remake. So Nintendo, please make a remake for the Switch. Otherwise, it's really fun. You have a lot of cool mechanics in there. You can mug people and steal their weapons and then throw their dead bodies to the side. The, the mechanic is called Capture. Um, you have some pretty cool characters. You have really, really interesting plot. And this is actually kind of a mid cool for the previous game. It takes place in the middle of the second act and you play as one of the main characters, sons and their retainers. And it's really cool. It's a really cool Fire Emblem game and I really like it. And it never made it over here, which is a shame. Nintendo, please do a remake. Moving on, we have God, which is a tortured acronym for something, I don't know about destiny. Anyway, it takes place in 1999 and it's very much an earthbound kind of game until like you just see there your entire city dang it is destroyed by freaking aliens and then the rest of the game you go on and you fight all these monsters in a apocalyptic future it's really 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 cool i really enjoyed this game a lot it has a lot of elements of like chrono trigger and earthbound like i mentioned and just all sorts of different cool rpg ideas and it's a shame it never made it over here Give God a look. In a similar earthboundy vein, The Adventures of Horror High High is definitely an RPG that does not take itself serious. Uh, the very beginning of the game, you get thrown out of a plane because the pilots fell asleep and they overflew your island. So they just kick you out of the plane with a parachute. You uh, join clubs to get new skills like the job system in Final Fantasy V. And it's just it's just weird. You go around beating up hall monitors and then you figure out weird mysteries as part of your club. One of your clubs is you write for the newspaper. And it's just, it's very Japanese. It's very weird. It's very earthboundy. And uh, I really like it. It's, it's an odd one. If you like lighthearted RPGs that don't take themselves too seriously, give Adventures of Horror High High a chance. Boy, that's a mouthful. Almost done with the SNES stuff. Up next, we have Treasure of the Rudras. It is a weird game. It's split between four different characters and you control all of them. You only have 14 days until the world is destroyed. 
and you do your little teams and you find giants and you can also make your own spells which is super cool you're supposed to use prefixes and suffixes that they tell you have certain effects or you can just write poo poo pee pee on there and it's a dark spell and it will actually cause a significant amount of damage in your early game which is pretty cool our last super nintendo game on here is wonder project j this game is weird it's like Pinocchio, but with a robot instead of a little wooden doll. No, Gary! And you control him by controlling a robot fairy. So you can point at things and say, go over here and pick this up. And if he does it correctly, you say, good job. Well, you shouldn't kick a dog! And if he does it bad, you strike him. Be nice to the dog. Like, look, Gary's gonna hit that dog. That's not nice, Gary. No, Gary! Anyway, the graphics are super impressive, and it's a fun little life sim. Jumping over to the Game Boy Advance, we have Mother 3. Now, everyone and their brother has been asking for this to be localized, and the game itself has been translated with a very, very professional patch for quite some time now. I've played it, and I've beat it now once. I've uh, started it probably six or seven times. Every time I get a new handheld that's Game Boy Advance-centric, I start a new game, but I, uh, I haven't finished it in quite some time. Mother 3 is super emotional, it's got a great plot, it's got great gameplay, there's like a hidden rhythm combat thing that you don't really even need to master to beat the game, but it can uh, help you out, make you more effective in your battles, but Mother, Mother 3 is amazing. If you haven't played it, go get the translation patch and just, just play it. Just, just play it. Magical Vacation for the Game Boy Advance is quite frankly one of the prettiest games on the system, maybe one of the prettiest pixel games of all time. It's kind of like Harry Potter, but instead of magic, you can see spirits, and it's a school, and there's everyone's named after, like, coffee shop treats. It's very weird, but uh, it's a pretty cool game. The uh, combat is pretty good. It's kind of like Golden Sun. You have to balance a bunch of different things. It's not just like, I'm going to punch you, and then I'm going to use my magic. You have to balance these spirits you control. Boy, look at that car. That's beautiful. And uh, it, it really is. It's a really cool hidden gem Game Boy Advance game, and it's beautiful. Last but certainly not least is Sweet Home for the Nintendo. Uh, this game is kind of like a horror movie. You have five characters. You can make a three-person party, or you can send them all off solo. Each one of them has different equipment that you need to use. Like the one guy is... He's carrying a vacuum cleaner for some reason. So your first puzzle is, I got to pick up this broken glass with a vacuum cleaner. Another guy has a camera. So you go take a picture of a fresco and you just kind of do that throughout the entire game. It has a whole bunch of puzzles. You can fight monsters and uh, it has five different endings. It's really cool, especially for something like the NES where they really push the boundaries of the system. And it's a pretty cool little RPG. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Well, that was all 10. I hope you liked them. There were a couple in there that were a little odd. One of them's actually a little bit difficult to emulate. But all 10 are worthwhile games to check out. I think my favorite, hmm, Mother 3. Terry Crews is going to get mad at me. Mother 3 barely counts because that fan translation is practically a legitimate version of the game at this point. But outside of Mother 3, I think God, God's probably my favorite. You were 100%... This is going to be Earthbound, and then aliens come and kill everyone, and then BOOM! You're essentially Kyle Reese, except instead of Terminators, you're fighting weird squid monsters and aliens. Anyway, let us know what you think about this collaboration. Uh, do you like when we do an article and an accompanying video? Huh? If you haven't read the article, make sure to go to our website. Uh, put it on the screen, Gary. Retrohandhelds.gg. Good game. Check it out. And... Uh, if you liked the video, remember to like and subscribe and do all that jazz. We'd really appreciate it if you subscribe because we're we're getting close to one of those weird silver buttons. I want to put that in my, my den. And people come by to say, what's that? What's that YouTube thing up there? And I'll say, oh, you didn't know? And then they will be flabbergasted at my secret identity like Batman.